Welcome to this lesson on game theory, specifically the Nash Equilibrium. My name is Matt Rosu, Professor of Economics and Dean of the Sigmund Weiss School of Business at Susquehanna University, teaching a course on game theory this semester. And everybody's welcome to follow along as I'm posting videos of the lectures online. So previous videos are in the description. You can find the links to them in the description. Today we're talking about Nash equilibrium. The formal definition of the Nash equilibrium gets a little bit convoluted, right? It's the Nash equilibrium in a game. It's the list of all of the strategies with one strategy per player so such that no player can get a better payoff by deviating from a particular strategy given everybody else's actions. Okay, that's a mouthful. Simplifying this a little bit, it simply means at any particular outcome, it is a Nash equilibrium if nobody has an incentive to deviate unilaterally, right? You're at an outcome, should you stay with the choice or should you do something different? Each person would say, well, I should stay because of what everybody else is doing, I'm better off staying, or at least there's no incentive to switch. A game could have one Nash equilibrium or it could have multiple Nash equilibrium. The term it comes from mathematician John Nash featured in the movie A Beautiful Mind. So John Nash actually won a Nobel Prize in economics in 1994. He was one of the recipients for his work within game theory. And uh, the Nash equilibrium concept really helped popularize game theory because it showed how relevant it could be in thinking through problems. So game theory really exploded actually after a little bit of the work of John Nash, which was interesting because he didn't really do all that much research in this area. But what he did was really impactful both with this and later in the course we're going to learn a little bit about how John Nash's work with bargaining matters. Now on the previous video, we discussed uh, the prisoner's dilemma game. So came up with the payoff matrix, right? A prisoner could confess or deny. They will get some years in prison for confessing the crime, some for denying. And really what happens is that the uh, officers talk to each person and essentially say, look, you'll get a better deal by confessing and speaking against your counterpart. That's, and you know, look, if the idea, right? Put people in a separate room, ask them to testify. If they testify, the police, the lawyers will go very easy on the person who kind of helps put the others in jail. So it's the prisoner's dilemma game. So the years in prison for prisoner A, which is always listed as the first payoff, and prisoner B, which is listed as the second payoff, are listed in this payoff matrix. If they both confess, they each get five years. If they both deny, they each only get two years. But if one confesses and one denies, the one who denies is going to go to prison for 10 years. The one who confesses gets out after a year, right? Not as much time. And that's the case for either of these. Remember, prisoner A's payoff is first. Prisoner B's payoff is second. And it always, the row player is listed with the first payoff, then the column player. So what happens if prisoner B chose deny and prisoner A chose confess? So if we happen to be at this outcome, is it a Nash equilibrium? The answer to this is no. Why is it no? Because it is a Nash equilibrium if neither player would want to change their choice given the actions of the other player. Well, at this outcome, right, the person getting 10 years clearly would want to change their choice to, instead of choosing con um, to deny the crime, player B would rather confess moving over to the confess confess outcome and getting five years instead of 10 years. So one of them, uh, prisoner B denying the crime, prisoner A confessing, that is not a Nash equilibrium. Well, the same is gonna hold for the opposite where prisoner A denies, prisoner B confesses. In that one, prisoner A is getting 10 years. If instead they were to confess, they would only get five years uh, naturally, there is an incentive to move away from the choice of denying to confessing. So prisoner A denying, prisoner B confessing is not a Nash equilibrium. 
What about this outcome here where they both deny, which looks like a pretty sweet payout for them, given the options, right? They each only get two years in prison. It's by far the lowest total amount of prison time on this payoff matrix. But what do we see here? Both prisoner A and prisoner B would be getting two years, but both of them have an incentive, but given what the other player's doing, to switch from denying to confessing. They go from two years in prison to one year in prison. Therefore, both denying is not a Nash equilibrium, and the only Nash equilibrium of this game is for both players to confess. The payoff is five years in prison for each of them. But this is not what we would call a Pareto efficient outcome. We defined Pareto efficiency earlier. There is another outcome available where both players are better off. So the prisoner's dilemma, it puts you in the situation where the outcome leads to payoffs that are worse than some other outcome on the game. And it's worse for both players, which is really bad, but they each have this individual incentive to confess the crime to try to get that lower uh, outcome for themselves. We've talked a little bit about dominant strategies already. Anytime all players in a game have a dominant strategy, you can be sure you found the one and only Nash equilibrium of a game. You can use dominant or dominated strategies to help reduce the number of potential Nash equilibria. It can help as you're trying to simplify games. Another thing we'll note, look, the Nash equilibria that we have looked at to this point, everything is what we call a pure strategy Nash equilibrium, where a player or all the players will always want to do one specific choice all the time. There are games where that's not the optimal move, where you should be taking one strategy some percent of the time and a different strategy some other percentage of the time. Uh, those be known as often at those are known as mixed strategy Nash equilibria. We will be covering that later in this course. So Nash equilibria, the concept's powerful, finding the Nash equilibrium of a game. It's going to come up throughout the course. That's all for this lesson within the game theory course. Hope you enjoyed it. Please click like and subscribe. If you click the notifications bell, you will get notified when the next video drops, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.